Is the Sony Bravia XR X90J the most underrated TV in 2021? Let's take a look and find out. Hi guys, it's Jonathan from Smart Home Sounds, a home audiovisual retailer based in the UK. Today we're taking a look at the Sony Bravia XR X90J TV. Now there are already some great reviews out there on the X90J which go into a lot of detail on the spec, but our aim in this video will be to simplify things down to what you really need to know, our experience with this TV and cover some key comparisons with other options on the market to help you decide if this is going to be the right TV for you. I'll pop a link to our website below if you want to check it out and you'll also find the most up-to-date pricing and offers there too. Don't forget we do offer free delivery and Sony's five-year warranty and our team is always here to have a chat if you've got any extra questions. Make sure you comment your thoughts and questions down below and we've got plenty more content including a full comparison of Sony's 2021 lineup coming soon so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that. Right let's get into the video. So in this video we'll be covering the X90J's design and setup key features, visuals, sound performance, and gaming capabilities. I'm then gonna cover comparisons with other options out there, including what you're missing out on without OLED, how this compares with last year's models, including both the XH90 and the XH95, which I know we've had a lot of questions about, and how it compares with similar models in this market. I think there has been a lot of hype about OLED at the moment with a lot of focus on the top of the range OLED offerings from Sony, LG, etc., or their new Master Series TVs. And yes, OLED does offer an exceptional experience. However, not everyone has the budget for OLED or maybe even the desire to be dropping that kind of money on a TV. I think non-OLED TVs can be a bit overlooked in favor of the more exciting TVs on paper. So I wanted to review the X90J as a good alternative and to see if it's worth considering as a dark horse this year. First of all, before we get into any of the features, can we just take a moment to appreciate how stunning this beach footage looks? This is in Hawaii and I would love to be there right now. Right, enough of the fantasizing, let's kick off the video with the need to knows about the X90J. So the X90J is Sony's new for 2021 full array LED TV, replacing last year's XH90 model. As always, I'll break the name down into simple terms. So the XR at the start refers to the new Bravia XR processor, which is powering this TV. The 65 is the screen size. X is the model class, which is full array LED. 90 is the specific model reference. And J signifies that this is a 2021 TV. As you can see, it sits in the middle of their new 2021 lineup with the new X95J coming later this year being the flagship full array LED option. And then you've obviously got the step up to OLED or down to LED. I'll be covering comparisons later in the video, but that gives you an idea of where this TV sits in the Sony range. It's available in a range of sizes and prices, but a quick disclaimer, these are the RRPs which have actually increased slightly since launch, but you might find pricing changes as it always does with TVs. So the sizes start at £1,249 for the 50 inch, £1,399 for the 55 inch, £1,799 for the 65 inch, which is the model we've got here for testing, and £2,599 for the 75 inch. So moving on to the design then, so it's not too different from last year's XH90 model, although there are a few tweaks to highlight. So as you can see, it's got a really nice thin bezel around the edge of the screen. And while the TV unit isn't the slimmest, um, it still offers a sleek appearance in my opinion. As with all Sony TVs, it was nice and simple to get out of the box, even in this larger 65 inch size, though you will need two people. The legs were surprisingly easy to slot on. You literally just sit the TV on top of the legs. No screws or tools are required. You can, of course, warm out this TV or you can adjust the stands. Now, the standard position is great for wider TV units and it fits a wide soundbar comfortably between the legs. You can also opt for the narrow position if you have a narrow stand, um, but this option isn't available in the 50 inch size. Taking a closer look, the TV is mostly a durable plastic material and it doesn't have the same premium feel as the A90J, but that is to be expected with the price difference. It does still retain a decent visual appearance overall and the back panel has this new grid pattern which I prefer over last year's design. The cable management isn't as good as the models higher up in the 2021 range, but at least it offers cable management with the clips on the feet to keep it all looking nice and tidy. Now in terms of height, it's perfect for a soundbar, but obviously can't sit flush with your TV stand. 
The remote is fine, there's nothing hugely of note. It's not their premium backlit design, but it does have handy buttons here to jump to the most popular apps, which includes an extra Disney Plus button over last year's model. And you can actually use this remote for voice control of the TV for hands-free control, which is a nice feature if you like using your voice for control. In terms of setup, this was quick and simple to get going. Now, Google TV has replaced the 2020 Android TV interface and it is noticeably quicker and more responsive. It's more just intuitive to use and allows you to access your choice of apps and content and you can really personalize the TV for you. They've got a huge choice of apps. There are actually over 5,000, so it's got everything that you could possibly need. There are some ads though, which are a bit annoying, but you can turn off personalized ads in the settings if you want to do that. I still much prefer the Apple TV interface, but this isn't bad at all, and it is a big upgrade from previous years. Having said that, there was a recent UI update on older Sony TVs from 2020, which has made some improvements, and that's the great thing that you get with so uh, software updates. You also get built-in Chromecast with this TV, which is something to highlight too if you're a user of that. And you can also access Sony's new streaming service, Bravia Core, with this TV, and you can actually get five free credits to spend on movies. Now, we've been generally impressed with this service. It offers something different to the likes of Netflix, um, as Sony has such a huge catalogue of movies and also includes exclusive behind the scenes and backstage footage and interviews, which is worth checking out if you're interested in that sort of thing. You can also access IMAX enhanced content too. Right, let's cover some of the key features of this TV then. So the X90J features Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos and support for DTS-X. It also offers a Netflix calibrated mode, which is a nice plus if you're a Netflix binger like me and means the TV is optimized for the content that you're watching. Now the main thing to highlight with this TV is that it's the first model in Sony's 2021 range to offer the new Bravia XR processor, a step up from the X1 processor in last year's models. So that means that you are accessing the same processing power used in Sony's top of the range master series OLED TVs and their 8K TV in models far lower down in the range. So Bravia XR uses cognitive intelligence and it's supposed to replicate how we see and hear to make your visuals and audio more true to life and natural. If I'm being honest, I was a little bit skeptical whether it would be that different to real life viewing. However, the first TV we saw in person with a Bravia XR processor was the A90J, which we tested against my A8 with the old processor in. And although very subtle at the start, over time you do notice that smaller details and colors are a lot more realistic and it does enhance the overall picture. So the processor is obviously the brains behind the TV and it powers the picture, audio and everything else like that. Again, there's a lot of jargon and technical terms being thrown around such as XR contrast, XR picture, XR color, XR motion, the list goes on and I personally don't think you need to know all of that. So instead, I'm just gonna give you my experience with this TV and anything that I picked up in testing that I think you guys will find helpful if you're considering this TV. So first things first, let's talk picture quality. Obviously, we've recently tested the A90J, the master series OLED, and as a full array LED with a smaller price Price tag, the X90J isn't quite at that level. If I'm being honest, I think I've been spoiled with OLED and I do think that once you go OLED, you can't go back, a bit like Apple. However, for a non-OLED TV, I am impressed. Out of the box, however, I was a bit concerned that I wasn't blown away by the picture. To be honest, I did get into the picture settings to achieve a look I was very happy with. But that is a big plus for this TV. There is so much customization available so you can really alter it to suit you. You might be happy with it out of the box, but I found that cinema mode is best for movies. And I then made a few other tweaks, including turning the black level just down a bit, um, putting the advanced contrast to medium and the same with local dimming and peak luminance. So once I had done all that, I then tested it out on a huge variety of content across lots of different platforms. It's definitely bright. That's something that you can achieve easier in non OLED TVs. HDR content, however, in the A90J was a bit brighter, but this still ticks that box for me. I personally think this TV enables you to access a fantastic picture quality without having to pay that OLED premium price tag, and it shares a lot of the same desirable features. It is without a doubt a step up from its predecessor, the XH90, which I think is largely down to that new processor. Now the X90J does definitely benefit from this upgraded processor and the colors and contrast in particular were notably enhanced. 
The X90J also uses AI to emphasize areas of the screen where you would be focusing your attention in real life. It is very difficult to translate on camera or in a video, but in person, I do think this is very effective and I can't stress enough how well that is a selling point of this TV. Combined with Bravia XR, this technology chooses the focal points of the image and enhances those. So for example, on a close-up of someone's face, more details would be drawn out in the eyes rather than the chin, for example. In person, I think this does boost the overall viewing experience and I'll try and show you now with a bit of content that I found earlier. So from what I can see from standing here, a lot of my attention is diverted to the features on the face, like the eyes and the nose and the mouth, for example. They come out really, really well. So the black levels are the most noticeable enhancement on this TV and that contrast helps the colours to pop off the screen better. So the colour reproduction overall I would say is really good as well. Now I'm not going to get into nit rates and things like that, there are other channels out there for that, but our testing showed that this offered a very bright performance, um, we didn't experience any blooming and things like that. The contrast ratio is outstanding and it's the full array local dimming which enables the TV to offer those impressive black levels. I would say that the native 120Hz panel was great for action films and sports in particular. Motion flow is also a nice feature and it worked really well on some content, although in some circumstances I found I preferred the visuals when it was off. Now I think that's going to come down to what you're watching and the viewing experience that you're after. One downside that we have come across is that wide angle viewing isn't a strong point for this TV. Our testing room isn't very wide at all and we don't have off angle seating so it's not going to be an issue in this room. Um, it's fine for slightly off centre seating but I wouldn't recommend it if your room has very wide off axis seating angles as you're going to experience issues in those wider positions. Of course the TV is still watchable from any angle but you lose the contrast, the blacks aren't as dark and the overall picture does lose a bit of its clarity and balance. Now the sound on this TV is something we need to talk about but for some of you this might be irrelevant if you already have a soundbar or home audio setup. So the X90J offers acoustic multi-audio and XR sound position technology which essentially helps the sound replicate the action you're seeing on the screen. So there's two sound positioning tweeters at the back of the TV that allow the sound to pass across the screen and two full range X balance speakers also boost the audio performance. The mids, treble and vocals are really, really nice in this TV and it does a good job of sending the sound from the right area of the screen for a more realistic audio experience. I would say that the sound performance isn't up there with, with the likes of Acoustic Surface Audio Plus available in the OLED TVs where the screen actually becomes the speaker. However, a nice feature is 3D surround upscaling, which upscales standard stereo or 5.1 channel audio to 5.1.2 to offer surround and height channels. In my opinion, this doesn't compare with a dedicated surround system, but if you want to achieve a similar effect, this is possibly the next best thing. It also offers acoustic auto calibration, which uses the built-in mic in the remote and it optimizes the acoustics for the room. Now this is a very similar technology to Sonos's Auto True Play tech and in testing did make some slight adjustments, but it is very subtle. If I'm being honest, the sound performance was a little bit disappointing for me. Again, I am aware that I've been spoiled with soundbars and subwoofers and things like that. However, I do think you notice the lack of a sub within this TV. Some content you'll be watching and waiting for a bassy rumble or to feel a bit of bass and it just doesn't come. If you have a soundbar or home audio setup, this won't be an issue for you, of course. As always, I would advise getting the TV first and seeing what you feel, um, but for a big TV, it does feel a bit empty. Now, I know a lot of people will be considering this TV for gaming as well as general viewing, and we think this will be a very, very popular TV for gamers, especially with that 50-inch option. So this TV and all other Sony 2021 models higher than the X85J is capable of 4K 120 FPS which is great for gaming. The X90J also offers very low input lag which in testing was very apparent. The lowest latency is in the game picture mode. Now game mode turns off the post processing in a TV so that it can offer reduced input lag. In our testing this was particularly great for things like hectic games. One thing we know has annoyed a lot of you is the ongoing promise of VRR being on the way. Now for some of you this isn't a deal breaker and I would imagine it's a lot of PC gamers who are most frustrated by this. Sony have been promising this for a while now with the date being pushed back. It's currently looking like the uh, end of this year so fingers crossed. 
In terms of inputs, there's a twin port here as both HDMI 3 and HDMI 4 support HDMI 2.1, which is always good. Annoyingly though, HDMI 3 is also the eARC port. So if you've got a soundbar and you want to connect both an Xbox and a PlayStation, this is going to cause some issues. If you have a soundbar which offers a 4K 120 FPS pass through, then you're all good. But if not, you would either need to swap the devices around when you use them, which is a bit annoying, or we would recommend opting for an HDMI 2.1 friendly AV receiver, which can pass through 4K 120 Hertz signals. We have not yet tested this for any potential lip sync issues though, so don't take my complete word for that. So we've already mentioned the connections for gaming, but let's just have a quick look at the back and cover the other connections that you get with this TV. So you've got two USB slots, an optical output, a headphone output, AV input, four HDMIs, three and four are for auto low latency mode and 4K at 120 FPS and down the line VRR, an Ethernet, IR in and an ATSC 3.0 twin tuner for 4K broadcast over the air. Finally done that after three takes. Okay, let's move on to the comparison section of this review then. So I'll start off with the X90J versus the X95J, which is either available now or coming soon, depending on when you watch this review. Now, this is not really a fair comparison. The X95J is designed to be a step up from the X90J. That's why it comes at a slightly higher price point and it will be Sony's 2021 flagship full array LED TV. And the main things to note are that the step up to the X95J will get you X wide angle technology so you can enjoy off axis viewing. You would also get an integrated sub to help boost the bass and the full range X balance speakers in the X90J become front facing speakers in the X95J for a better sound performance. Now there are other differences, but I'll wait until we get the X95J in the studio to do a full comparison. Now, as 2020 models such as the X-H90 and X-H95 are currently still available at the time of filming this video, I think we should cover those two as they naturally have dropped in price as a result of the new models being released. So you can grab a great deal on those. Now, both are very good options, but it's the new Bravia XR processor for me, which offers a step up in real life. There's a wider color palette and richer contrast and depth found in the X90J, thanks to a higher contrast ratio than the X-H90. So you do get deeper blacks and it can get brighter in HDR. Another improvement I just wanna highlight there is that the X90J offers 4K 120, which is now perfect down to the pixel level, as I know there were some issues with this on the X-H90. The X-H90 was a very popular TV last year with the 65 inch size winning the Watt Hi-Fi Award for best TV under 2000 pounds. With this TV being a step up, replacing that model, we expect this will be hugely popular and build on this further. So let's compare with the X-H95, which is the model above from last year. So the 2020 flagship full array LED from Sony. Now this is a tough call, but a comparison I know I need to cover as I've seen you guys in the comments. So pros for the X-H95 is that it doesn't have that same issue with wide off axis seating angles. It actually has X wide angle viewing technology designed to combat this. So if you've got a lounge that needs to accommodate very wide seating angles, then that's kind of a no brainer for me. You'll get deeper blacks in the X90J due to a better contrast ratio, so if you watch TV in the dark or with the lights dimmed, that is something to consider. The X-H95, however, can get brighter and it offers a wider range of colors. However, if you're into your gaming, then the X90J would be the better option because of the HDMI 2.1 support and the ability to display 4K at 120 FPS signal and when it eventually supports VRR. If the X90J is a bit out of budget, but you still want a 2021 model, you can always drop down to the X85J or X80J. Now these are standard LED TVs, so you will be dropping down in quality with either of those. Now they aren't gonna perform quite as well as if you were to watch a movie in the dark, as it doesn't offer that full array local dimming and it just can't get quite as bright. Now in terms of comparisons with models from other brands, some comparable models would be the Samsung Q80A QLED and the LG Nano 90. Comment down below if you want an in-depth video on this, but for now I'll just highlight some key differences for you. So if we look at the Q80A, it's very different from the X90J as it has a different panel type, IPS, which doesn't offer the same contrast ratio. It can, however, offer wider viewing angles for those off-axis seating angles. It can get brighter and again has a wider color range. 
The full array local dimming is better on the X90J, but the Samsung does support the VRR Sony have been promising for a while now. The Samsung Q80A only offers one HDMI 2.1 support, which some of you will find is fairly restrictive, and it doesn't offer Dolby Vision, which we know a lot of people are quite unhappy about. Moving on to the Nano 90, that's an IPS panel as well, compared to a VA panel in the Sony, which I know different people might see as a good or bad thing, but what it does offer is support for wide viewing angles, the widest of these three models actually. It also offers anti-reflective coating, which is great for brighter rooms. However, the IPS screen doesn't perform as well in darker rooms, so you do need to think about your viewing habits, what your environment is like the majority of the time, etc. One final thing to note is that only the Sony is available in the smaller 50-inch model size. Now, that was obviously a very quick, brief comparison just to highlight the key differences, but I hope that helped you if you're considering any of these options or comparing all three. Now there are of course other brands and models that we could compare this to, but I don't want to overcomplicate things. So feel free to comment any comparison requests below and we'll do our best to help you out. My overall verdict on the X90J then is that it is definitely a dark horse this year. Yes, the OLED models are fantastic and if you've got the budget, I think OLED offers a viewing experience you'll struggle to access with full array LED. But, and this is a big but, you don't have to pay for OLED to get a great TV. You're accessing so many of the great features and technology in this TV that are found not only in their Master Series OLEDs, but also in their 8K TVs, most notably that Bravia XR processor. The level of optimization available is also a big plus as it enabled me to get a very impressive picture just right for me, and you will be able to do the same thing for you. Downsides for me though was the sound, so while clarity was good, I just felt I wanted a little bit more impact from a TV of this size. Of course, if you have a soundbar, this won't be an issue and I can't see it being a problem with the smaller models either. Now, I wouldn't sleep on the 2020 models either. If your budget doesn't open you up to the newer models, then you can get some great deals on last year's TVs. But I can see the X90J being a hugely popular model this year and that 50 inch size being a great gaming option for many of you. So I think that just about wraps up this review. I hope you found that that helps. If it did, it would be great if you could subscribe and turn on that bell. Comment below any comparison you want us to do or any questions you've got. Don't forget we stock this TV as well as others on our website, so I will link that below as well as any of the other models that we've highlighted in this review. And as always, if you want any more personal help, our team are always happy to help, so do get in touch. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.